Hello and welcome to the first lecture of Super Data Science's Data Manipulation in Python course, where we're going to be delving into the Pandas library in Python to solve all of your data worries. But I'll get to that in just a tick, because this short introduction comes in three truly revolutionary parts. First, we'll cover what's actually in the course. That's probably the most important thing. Second, who is this disembodied voice talking to you right now? And then finally, what to do if you have any questions or need any help from us in the course. So this course is obviously all about manipulating data sets. That's in the title, but what does it actually mean? Well, it means that we're going to learn how to explore datasets, both in numeric form and visually through plots. We'll learn how to clean datasets, because in real life, datasets don't come perfect. They are filled with wrong values, data is always missing, and somebody, usually us, has to come in and fix it. We'll learn how to take different datasets and combine them through merging, joining, and stacking. We'll learn how to transform and pivot datasets into different formats to delve into different information. We'll learn how to add to our data and derive complex properties using vectorized functions. And through all of these processes, we'll learn how we can manipulate and add features to our data such that it's ready for statistical analysis or to be fed into machine learning algorithms. And we'll be learning how to do all of these tasks in the most efficient way that I know how, because your time and my time is precious, and the less of it that we actually spend screwing around with data, the more time we can devote to actually doing interesting things. And here's our actual core structure to help get through all of those different tasks. You're in chapter one right now, which is the introduction and setup. So that's getting you a Python environment, in our case, a Conda environment, getting you an editor to use, and explaining how to keep track of all your files and how to open the notebooks that I'll be giving you guys throughout the other lectures. In chapter two, we're going to run through how we can get our hands on data. Data doesn't always come in exactly the same format, so there's a bunch of different methods you'll need to learn in order to essentially load any data you get. We'll also talk about how you can save data out in different formats, the performance benefits they have, all of the good stuff that for most of the time you don't need to worry about, but when you do need to worry about it, it's really good to know. In chapter three, we're going to get onto visualization. That is how we can use matplotlib, pandas, and seaborn to explore our data visually, and then also how we can use HTML output to explore our data in a more numeric and tabular fashion. That ties in well with chapter four, which is learning the basics, and by basics, I mean the functions that you're going to use every single time you start a new project and load new data in. There are certain common things that we always do, and learning how to do these efficiently is going to save you a whole bunch of time. The next chapter is all focused on data grouping, which is one of the most common things you're going to do. You're going to have a huge data set and say, hey, there's a group, let's group that by country or age or some various demographic and get out results pertaining to that. So we'll cover exactly how to do all of that in chapter five, and then chapter six is all about merging data. When you have different data files, you want to combine them in different ways, so we'll go through how you can do that super easily. Up next is then one of the more advanced things that we'll cover in this course, pivoting data. I know there are a whole bunch of tutorials, even some entire courses on Udemy about pivoting data, but we don't need an entire course. A chapter will be fine because Pandas makes it so much easier than other tools. So that's chapter seven, and then chapter eight finishes us off with time series data. Time series data is absolutely everywhere. Whether you're looking at the stock market or temperature history or anything else, learning how to manipulate, resample, apply functions on time series data is absolutely crucial to any data science job. Now, the way that we cover each chapter is actually fairly simple. If there are concepts to explain beforehand, I'll sit down with a presentation like this and go over the concepts before jumping into the code. More often than not, because this is a very code-focused course, we'll just jump straight into the code anyway, and I'll explain as I go, trying to keep things as simple as possible, of course. And then at the end of every chapter, I provide an optional practice problem for you. So I'll point you at a data set and I'll say, here are a bunch of interesting questions or things that we want to answer about the data. And then you can go through and code up the solutions yourself. Obviously I have an answers document for every question that I give you. So you can either code up your own and see what I did or just look straight at what I did or not look at what I did at all or just not even touch the exercises. You can put as much effort into them as you want because everyone learns in a slightly different way. 
And then at the end of the course, we're going to have a conclusion where we run quickly through all of the previous chapters and what I feel are the most important takeaways for each of them. On top of that, we'll also have some extra content after the conclusion lecture, whether that's just some extra practical problems, or it's me explaining how I've customized my Python development environment in case you wanted to do the same thing. If you have any interesting data sets with interesting questions that you also want me to have a look at and perhaps write up something on, feel free to send those through to me and we can try and add them to the course so that it's more useful for you and for other students. All right, so let's wrap up this lecture here and in the next one I'll run through who exactly I am and why you should even bother to listen to me and then we'll also run through where you can get help, whether it's help with the course, help with Python or help with Udemy. Hopefully it only takes another couple of minutes to finish up all the admin and then we can get into the good stuff.